as protocol has already been established. I want to say a special thanks to Sister Kilpatrick and to Sister McLeod for receiving me as the preacher today. And Sister Kilpatrick, thank you for helping me learn how to serve in this district, in this conference. To Mrs. Lavernsky, the president of the Georgia T. Ransom Missionary Society of Holy Trinity in Wilberforce, who is present with us and others, thank you for coming and for serving. And of course, to Dr. Holly, my first professor when I took that seminary journey back in 2011, who became my dean, my advisor, and who opened the door for me to continue my education at Payne and become um, holding the honor of being a doctor in the church. I appreciate you. And to Bishop McLeod, I appreciate you for accepting the recommendation for me to preach today. But more than that, thank you for accepting me as a preacher in your district. And thank you for your encouragement and your help along the way. All right, now, gracious God, as I have spent time in your presence, hiding in the secret place with my ear to your heart, I ask of God that you give me the composure and the confidence to say in public that which you have spoken in secret that your words will be seeds and fall into the fertile soil of our heart, that we leave today with something new inside, that we might continue to serve you faithfully. Now let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. As a subject, this morning, this afternoon, I'd like for you to consider, we've come to serve the Lord. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 through 38, hear the word of the Lord. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and every affliction. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. I must have been about 22 or 23 when I attended my first Kojic revival. The praise and worship was high. And I knew most of the songs until she belted out, I don't know what you come to do. I was like, oh, that one's new. <laughs> and everybody knew the song because they said, I don't know what you come to do. Y'all know it, right? <laughs> and then she said, I come to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet. I come to praise the Lord. Yeah, we know. <laughs> and this went on. You know how it goes four or five times or minutes or more or so. <laughs> and we were in it. And then she says, I come to serve the Lord. And we were like, wait, she changed the words on us. And it was like the spirit got a grip on her, like those words wouldn't let her go. Over and over and over again, she said, I come to serve the Lord, the Lord. I come to serve the Lord, the Lord. And pretty soon we were all saying, I come to serve the Lord. And we were all saying, the Lord. We were doing the calls and the responses. I come and the Holy Spirit was holding us and wouldn't let us go. And folks started dropping all over in tears and wails. And folks saying, yes, Lord, yes, I'm serve you, God, I'll serve you. And next thing you know, my eyes started leaking and stuff started coming out my face. And I couldn't hardly breathe. And I found myself on the floor before the pew saying, yes, Lord, I will serve you. I came to serve you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You see, my life. 
life had been a mess. I was 20-something, and I thought I was really grown, and, but I had no idea where I was, let alone where I was going. What am I here for, really? What am I doing? What is this life all about? And in that moment, I understood that I came to serve the Lord. I don't mean that I came to serve the church. I didn't mean that, that being in that church was even an act of service, but that I was on this planet. I was created in God's image and God's likeness, fashioned by the hand of God to serve the Lord. I'd been running the church streets with Reverend Gloria Butler, a mother who God gave me. I'd been to the AME church with her, and she had me preaching. You think my sermons are long now? You should have seen them then. And, 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 and I'd been to Powerhouse, uh, Powerhouse of Faith Church of God in Christ. I'd go there after the AME church. They'd still be in uh, praise and worship when we got there. And, and I was at New Beginnings, and I was at Church of Life. And, and under the guise of being her driver, she drug me to everybody's revival. If they had church, we were there. But now it was time to settle and serve. Now it was time. I joined St. James AME Church in Odessa, Missouri, where three years later I'd be licensed to preach by the late presiding elder Prince Albert Williams. St. James was a small membership church. It was 45 minutes from the city where we lived. It didn't have any hymnals or bulletins. I didn't even know I was in an AME church and didn't know what AME was. But I knew Mother Butler said go, so I went. But when I told her about this encounter that I had with the Holy Spirit, she just chuckled and she said, well, it's about time. <laughs> and she gave me the book of discipline and she said, go home and read. It was on those first pages that I knew this was my church, for this is what it said. The mission of the African Methodist Episcopal Church is to minister to the spiritual, intellectual, physical, emotional, environmental needs of all people. When I questioned, did I belong, she said, baby, go back and read again. You missed it. All people. Oh, I'm part of all. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> By spreading Christ's liberating gospel through word and deed, preaching the gospel, feeding hungry, clothing naked, housing homeless, we know what we're called to do. Yeah. And the preachers of this church calling us to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God for the first time, hearing from the pulpit that oppression was not God. I knew where I was supposed to be. I came to serve the Lord. <laughs> Nearly 20 years later, I walked into my first intensive at Payne Theological Seminary when one of my classmates, who is now my good friend, dear friend, she asked me loud and bold, girl, what are you doing here? <laughs> and my brain and my, my feelings were trying to figure out how to respond. <laughs> When my mouth just blurted out, I came to serve the Lord. <laughs> of all my church and around, this is where I have found a church that matched my sense of what it means to be a Christian and expanded my sense of what it means to be a Christian. Wow. To do what Jesus did, build hope throughout communities, sending us out into the world. For centuries, faithful believers in Christ have assembled for the sake of learning the word and taking care of each other, doing our best to figure out what it means to have church, do church, be church, whatever we're saying these days. <laughs> faithful believers have strived to keep hope alive amidst the sham of our systems and the terrorists who will die upholding them. We strive to keep hope alive amidst changes in our communities, our congregations, our families, our bodies, and our budgets. And while we are being called to be provocateurs of hope, many of us are finding it a challenge to hold hope in our own hearts. Across the broad spectrum of Christendom, the numbers of those populating the pews are declining. We know this, just go to church on Sunday. Uh, but since 2019, uh, the first time in the history of tracking uh, church data, there were, no, there were fewer churches opening than there were closing. In 2022, 67% 
of Americans reported attending church at least once a year. And that was down from 75% before the pandemic. When we focus on declining numbers, our hearts will faint. If we focus on increasing numbers, our efforts will fail. The late Bishop Anderson said that we must not concern ourselves with being successful, but with being faithful. Jesus called us to build the ecclesia, the kingdom of God, not the empire, not the institution. Matthew 6.33 says that if we seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, all these things will be added. We won't have to worry. The empire, the institution will take care of itself when we focus on building the kingdom. And the moments that I have felt most hopeless about the state of the church and most helpless about impacting it, the times when I have felt most like throwing in the towel, I have heard the Spirit say, girl, you know what you came to do. I have shelves of books about church growth. I have been to a plethora of workshops. But I tell you the truth, I have found no better strategy than written in the pages of our own book to minister to the spiritual, social, physical development of all people. This directive mirrors the kingdom building strategy that Jesus modeled in Matthew 9. Jesus went. Jesus went to where the people were spending their time. Jesus did not open the doors of the church and shame everyone who didn't come in. I'm just saying. <laughs> and Jesus saw the people, and what he saw broke his heart. Oh, that what we see breaks our heart. Jesus saw us with compassion, a love that led to action. He did not see people just uh, who, as who they were. He didn't, just, he didn't just see them as people who only care about themselves. He didn't see them as people who didn't care about their communities. He didn't see them as drug addicts or prostitutes or fast girls or bad boys. He did not see them as liars and cheaters and thieves. He didn't see us more committed to saving our buildings than building the kingdom. He didn't see us so consumed with the busyness of church that we missed the purpose. What Jesus saw was us, all of us, doing the best we can to figure out who we are and who we are supposed to be in a world where everything we have known to be true is changing. Where the relevance of the church has changed, the communities around us have changed, the people among us have changed, and even if we won't confess it, we too have changed. He sees our confusion. He sees how we're out here wandering these church streets aimlessly, throwing spaghetti on the wall just to see what'll stick, harassed by an enemy that tells us no matter what we do, it's not enough. No matter how much we do, it's not enough. It's not good enough. It's not effective enough. It's not long enough. It's too long. It's not broad enough. It's not narrow enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Well, well, builders of the kingdom, I don't know what you come to do. Jesus told the disciples, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send the laborers. But that ain't what I came to do. I believe that we've come to be the response, the answer to the disciples' prayer. I believe that we've come to serve the Lord. I believe that we have come to bring hope 
to the hopeless. I believe that we have come to, to minister life to the lifeless, to bring light into the darkness. I believe that we have come to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, house the homeless. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that no matter how fancy schmancy our churches are, the doors of the church ought to be open when folks are laying on the street. I believe it. I believe it. I believe if you have peanut butter and I have jelly, we ought to make sandwiches to share. I believe it. I believe it. I believe we aren't supposed to have everything we need. I believe we are supposed to find the resources in our togetherness. I believe it. I believe it. I believe we have come to serve the Lord. Hope, hope for our communities is in our hearts. It is in the compassion through which we see the people around us. Compassion, love that leads to action. Where would I be? Where would I be if Mother Butler hadn't seen me? Snarky, smart aleck, know it all. 20 something thought I had it all together. Tell she snatched me up, told me, sit on that first pew and don't move till I tell you to. <laughs> Where would I be? Hope. Hope for our communities is in our heads. It is in the knowledge and skills we have gained that give us insight and in how to assess the community, to learn the needs, develop plans of action to serve as well as to dismantle the evil and unjust systems that create the ministries we have to provide. Satan might work all day trying it, but we know how to stay up all night rebuking it. Hope. Hope for our communities is in our hands. It is in the healing hugs and handshakes. It is in the hand up that we give and even in the hand out. It is in how we receive that which is offered to us, both in goods and souls. It is in how and who we are willing to receive. It is in our willingness to put our hand to the plow and not turn back. Yes, our world is changing. Yes, our methods are changing. But our mission, our assignment, tale as old as time, it is the same. Go into the communities. Go into the world. Go seeing with compassion. Go bringing good news. Go with help. Go. Now, I don't know what you come to do. 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 But I come to serve the Lord. 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 Your turn. I come to serve the Lord. I can the Lord the Lord the Lord the Lord the Lord I don't know what you come to do I don't know what you come to do I come to shout for joy I come to shout for joy. I come to shout for joy. I come to serve the Lord. I come to praise the Lord. I come to stomp my feet. I come to clap my hands. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. But I can't. 
came to serve the Lord. This, this afternoon, have you come to serve the Lord? The doors of the church, yeah, we say the doors of the church are open, but even more than that, the heart of the people is open. Your hearts are open. And the heart of God is open. Are, are you here today and you just need to say, yes, Lord, I recommit myself to serve because there'll be some things that get in our way that make us forget that we came to serve the Lord. Bills and budgets and reports and numbers, they get in our way. They make us forget that we're not here to sustain an institution, but to build kingdom. Do we just need to say yes, Lord, again? Yes, Lord. I'm not a singer. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my heart to the depths. Yes, Lord. Completely. My soul. If in your saying yes, you'd like to join in prayer together, the altar of the Lord is open. I'll be happy to pray with you, but the Holy Spirit is here and the Lord is with you where you are in every seat and pew in every space around us. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. My soul. Gracious God, we thank you for trusting us with the concerns of this world. We thank you for trusting us with so high a mission and so holy a calling. God, we thank you for trusting us to take the good news into the places where the most vulnerable lay waiting, harassed and helpless by an enemy who is relentless. Oh, Holy Spirit, heal us, restore us, strengthen us, encourage us, revive us so that we might go out 